The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Hello and welcome back to The Ben Heck Show. In today's episode, we're going to be building a DIY desktop oscilloscope using the Bitscope USB oscilloscope along with the Raspberry Pi. What? Tell me about the Bitscope. What's the Bitscope? So the Bitscope is one new type of oscilloscope that can do that. But you can also hook it up to a Raspberry Pi. Oh, okay. So I'm thinking we can actually create a single small desktop unit. Basically build our own oscilloscope. Okay, so normally the Bitscope would have to be plugged into another monitor or computer. Yeah, like then, a laptop or something. And then have the test leads external to that. Right, right. Yeah. So you'd have your computer, then the Bitscope, which is basically just a PCB. And then you'd have, probably have this on it, the BNC connector to connect to standard probes. Right, so we're gonna put that all into one module. Ooh, yeah. fancy. We also have this new seven inch touchscreen capacitive Raspberry Pi display. It's a really nice quality screen. It attaches to the Raspberry Pi using one of the ribbon cables. So I think we can use this as the front bezel of the unit. Yeah, and I think having the touchscreen will be a nice added feature and it being a self-contained unit. Yeah, okay, so the plan of attack is we'll take all the stuff and put it together, just make sure everything works, you know, get a test signal with it. Then once we know it works, we can try to shrink it down as much as possible, maybe rearrange the components, change the mounting, wire it up to be self-contained. Once we have that size determined, we can build a 3D printed case around it and then do final assembly and test it out. Sounds like it's gonna be a fun project. Let's get started. Amazing hacks. How can we make this portable? Inspire designs. I am the internet troll. Regrettable acting. Bad damn hatches! Each week, Element 14's The Ben Heck Show brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. Here are the parts we need to assemble a desktop bitscope oscilloscope using the Raspberry Pi 2. So we have the new seven inch screen for Raspberry Pi. Sweet, it's got a touch screen on it. Yeah, um, this is a new product they have at Element 14. There's, yeah, there's a touch screen controller there and the video data here. Most of the time with these screens, even on like a small cell phone, there'll be different cables for the touch screen controller and the video itself. Goes down like that. Oh, there's a nice mounting plate for both this and the Raspberry Pi. Oh, this footprint matches the Raspberry Pi, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, sweet. Okay, so this will go here, and then we have a Raspberry Pi 2, which you're all familiar with. That will mount over it. And now this is the bit scope itself, right? Yep. Looks like it consists of an FTDI USB converter chip, a microchip microcontroller, and a few other integrated circuits. I would assume one of them is probably an op amp of some kind. Trim pots, which apparently are locked in place, and then this is the probe connector on the end. This is a separate part? Yeah, it's a BNC adapter. Okay. <sighs> All right, so this you'd have to pay extra for. Mm -hmm. All right. So this is meant to go like this. It kind of looks like a spaceship or something. The Lex. The Lex? Yep. Okay. Hey, what if we did this, Felix? Hmm. That's possible. That could make it more compact. Definitely would. Yeah, because if it's like this, you know, we could make a rectangular portion for here, but then that would stick at the top. But then what about accessing the GPIO? Yeah, we'll figure that out later. Yeah, the, the problem with what I was proposing was the cable would have to flip. Yeah. So it's meant to go like this, right? Mm-hmm. Then my idea would require it to flip 45 degrees, which isn't, you know, it's not the end of the world as we know it. Or the beginning. Do we need the GPIO on this? We can power the screen through the GPIO. If we don't, if we, the, another way to power it is through the- uh, Oh, USB. it's not powered through this cable? No, it's not. That's what the GPIO- So we'll need a header here, five volts in ground. Yep. Do we also need the I squared C control? No. I see there's a I squared C bus on there. And an interrupt? You should always make sure, it's not just that you can get at the USB port, but if a USB device can fit into it, because you know, they're wider than the USB port. So that fits, let me try a thumb drive. This is the fattest thumb drive I have. That's eh, no fits. Yeah, but you know, I, I do like how you like, you say, let's just flip this over. Yeah, why not? Time to change everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, look at uh, look at how much more compact that is, if, if we can get it to work. Well, I know normally we would just boot this thing up and see if it works. I'm just trying to think of the best way to make it into a cool desktop unit. 
this is here. I think we can get away with that. That's not too horrible. Mm -hmm. It's better than like doing complete right angle bends. And then this, we can just rewire. We can rewire that part manually. That's only like what? 10 connectors. You put this here. Obviously, we're going to have to have screw posts. As far as the USB connector, hmm. maybe we can just flip this thing upside down and just directly wire the USBs. Is that okay. surf? Yeah, that's surface mount. Well, you know what we can do is we can <clears throat> find, obviously, these surface mount connectors will probably go to a resistor or capacitor of some kind. Mm -hmm. So we could actually solder to the um, those components there instead of the actual connector. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty compact. What do you think? Definitely. Well, shall we boot this thing up? Yeah, let's do it. All right. You said we need to, we need to power the uh, screen with the GPIO? Yep. Okay. That's all, that's what the jumpers are for? Mm -hmm. all right. Five volts and ground. Oh, I should know this by now. It's it's five, five ground on this, right? Yep. So these first two are five, and then ground is the third. That's all we need, it's ready to boot? Yes, and I pre-installed the BitScope software. I cut off the USB cable, so we have the plug going into the BitScope, and then I'm gonna attach it directly to the USB connections on the Raspberry Pi, just because we have enough room for this, but not really for this and the cable. So I'll just bring it over here like that and wire it up. And the reason I have the cable in place is so I can double check that the wiring is correct. If they're looking for like a 25 year old to do like a young Han Solo story, but then he wouldn't be in Rogue One because he would look older. <laughs> I've compacted everything down into a smaller form factor. I flipped the Raspberry Pi 2 Upside down, the cable over here does a flip, but it still fits. The USB for the bit scope is hand wired into one of the ports. We'll just block that port off with the case. This is gonna be separate. I still need to attach this, but it's gonna be about like that. So you can put this wherever you want. Yeah, now with this basic shape figured out, I think we can start designing a cool custom case. Our world is flush and diverse with life. Human life has reached over 7.3 billion people of all genders, ethnicities, colors, sizes, and shapes. We are capable of incredible things. We have conquered nature. We have created priceless works of art, composed music that inspires. We have learned to understand our universe like no form of life on this planet, while understanding our individual lives and how they come together. 15% of the people on Earth live with some form of disability. Generations are getting older and the need for independence grows. Technology has enabled all humanity to conquer, to create, to inspire, to learn, to relate. Engineers and makers have always created technology to enable the freedom for themselves and others. We challenge you, the engineers and makers of today, to build your own inventions using motor controls, to make a difference in someone else's life, to make life accessible. I have the four basic positions of the screw mounts as well as the shape of the glass bezel itself. I'm going to print out a rough casing just so we can make sure that it's right. Here's a test case that I printed out. It's a little rough, but it's just to give us a reference. All right, so this should fit here, I believe. I'm gonna tuck this in. Thinking the rear of the unit can just push right up against the glass. So we don't have to actually enclose the glass, we just have to push up to it and then attach these mounting screws. Let's have this upside down, let's try like this. So there's only two ways it can go on. So yeah, we'll have a back panel like this. It will push up against the four mounting spots and then we'll drop M3 screws through here to attach the panel to the glass. And then whatever stand this is on, we'll actually attach the plastic. Uh, we can obviously shrink this down from our first test here. Maybe do it in a couple layers. So I'm gonna turn it like this and do some extrusions. Actually, let's get all of this stuff. We can always come back and change it later. I'm designing this from the front, so this will be where the glass sits. So I want one inch of space inside of it, so I'm gonna go back 1.125, and the one, or the 125 will be the rear wall of it. So we can also take 
all of this and we have to do the same thing. Okay, so that creates a solid shape. This gap here is going to be where the USB access is. Let's remove some more stuff here. Okay, so uh, we want this inner part to be empty and that's where everything's gonna fit. Uh, added some walls here just to give it some uh, enclosure and strength. Although these I'm going to reduce so that we have space to run wires. Let's go about halfway. That will make sure that these parts aren't too flimsy. That looks pretty good. Okay, down here on the end, we have our uh, jacks. Um, I'm gonna make them a little bit wider. I mean, they fit okay before, but a little bit more tolerance would be good. My name is Max. My world is pies. So we need to do a few more things. We measured the height of the LCD to be 0.21 inches and then the mounts on the LCD are 0.1 inch. So we need to subtract 0.31 inches from these inner portions to make up for the LCD's height. Okay, there's one more thing we have to do and that's create the uh, inner screw wells. The amount of screw that is still above the metal mount is a quarter of an inch. So we have to go 0.31 plus 0.25, which is 0.56 down. So let's do that here and on the other screws. And then we'll once again push this down 0.31 to make it flush with everything else. Take a look at it from the side wire frame like this. So the screw head fits in here shaft goes through here and amounts into the metal right there. One more thing I think I might do though before I finish this off is just make sure we have enough gap around the screw. So we don't need to be the exact size of the screw shaft. We should be a little bit bigger because the screw shaft doesn't have to bite into the plastic. It only has to bite into the metal on the frame and then pull the plastic against it. So I'll probably boost this up to about 0.13 inches, even though it's a metric screw. Oh, the insanity. Let's take a look at what we have here. Okay, it looks pretty good. I think I will give a curvature to the back just to make it look nice. It'll also make it a little easier to remove from the build platform too. Add a fillet, and I'm gonna actually switch it into wireframe so I can make sure that I don't fill it past the inner groove, which should be fine. 0.3 looks pretty good. All right, let's take one more look at it, rendered. There we go. USB access there, power jack, probes, and then the screw holes down here are for the pivot mount. And I'll design the pivot mount once I have this thing running on the printer. All right, let's do the final assembly here. Just make sure all the cables tuck in between each other. Obviously it's best to do this while it's running, right Felix? Mm. <laughs> He looks like I plead the fifth. Let's put this here. There we go. You know what head this is? It should be it's a, a hex, hex head, something. shouldn't it? Here, I'll find it. Yeah, this thing turned out pretty cool, huh? Yeah, it looks pretty sweet. Sweet. Hey, Felix, can you uh, squeeze this part while I drive the screw? Yeah. Just, Just the some, bottom? Yeah. Okay. Got it? Yep. Well, Karen, we finished the Raspberry Pi Bitscope desktop oscilloscope. It looks really fancy. The case yeah. is really nice. It turned out well. Um, there's a nice uh, black bezel around the capacitive touch screen on this new LCD that we have attached to the Raspberry Pi 2. Mm -hmm. And that made it really easy to attach a nice looking case to it. So the front of it looks nice and shiny, like an iPad or something. Yeah. It, it that's kind of what it looks like, at least from the front. It's really nice. And it's a touch screen. Ooh, so yeah, let's, let's do an example. Hook up this alligator clip to that wire hanging off the Game Boy. Oh gosh, okay. Now I marked where the signals are, so okay. see the line that where the V is? Hit that, we should see a 60 hertz signal. There it is. Hey. Okay, that's the vertical sync. Now I'll go to the left and you'll find more signals. That's, actually that's a, that's a pixel data, so that's what's drawing the screen. The, cool. Another one. Next one over is more pixel data. So it's four shades of gray, the new novel. So that's two <laughs> bits. That's why there's two lines for the data. And there should be one more, which is horizontal sync. That's gonna be at 15 kilohertz. Very which cool. Is actually the same speed they use for TV. Weird. So what oscilloscopes are good for is looking at electronic signals in fine detail. It's like a microscope for electronic signals. 
In this case, we can use the bit scope to reverse engineer the signals going to the Game Boy. So when we make our giant Game Boy project, we'll know how to program the FPGA to take those signals and turn it into a VGA display. Cool. Yeah. So what is the benefit of using this over like your traditional desktop oscilloscope? Well, this is pretty reasonably priced to put together. The bit scope itself, you know, you don't have to build it into a case like this. You can mm -hmm. just buy the bit scope USB device and hook it up to any computer. Okay. And it's, you know, pretty reasonably priced. I mean, basically any sort of desktop scope is going to be at least three or $400. And then it goes up quite a bit from that if you get into like Agilent or Tektronix. Mm -hmm. Of course, those are you know, professional grade, yeah. very advanced scopes. Um, this is probably enough for a lot of people, a simpler scope like this. Oh, yeah. And we were able to make it our own thing with the touch screen and it has the tilt base. And, yeah. You know, it's also smaller than most oh, yeah. scopes. And it's a nice step up from, sometimes you see those uh, oscilloscopes made into like little MP3 boxes from China. They're like $100 oh, dollars or so. Yeah, I mean, they're a little smaller than this. This is a nice in-between between that and, you know, your three or $400 uh, scope at, from like Rigel or something. And it's DIY. Yeah, we were able to make it however we wanted. Oh, and there's a port on the back so you can attach keyboards, mice, ethernet, whatever you want. Mm, yeah, it worked out pretty well. Very cool. Including a plug port on that USB because on the internals, that USB is attached to the bit scope. So oh, okay. I made a plug with a 3D printer so you can't actually- 3D printed. Yeah, so Ooh. you can't plug anything into it and uh, screw up the signals. Nice. Yeah, it turned out pretty well. So I don't know, we'll either keep this and use it on the show or maybe we can give it away to a lucky viewer. Very cool. If you'd like to tell us what you would use the bit scope for, let us know in the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash TBHS. Where you can also read about our other upcoming episodes, builds, and special events. We'll scope you next time. <laughs> you were the chosen bear. <laughs> It's Max's bear impression. <laughs> Here they come again. The bullies making fun of me for being different. The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com.